as long as it's not a very large proportion of toxin that you're trying to compost. So if you've got a very small amount, suppose you're using some um, vegetable waste or fruit waste or, or even you know, some plant material that's been sprayed with a toxin or has had toxic chemicals applied to it, it's a small proportion. When it goes into the compost and goes through the cycle, right, the humic acids um, involved in the breakdown and all the life, 50 million genus of bacteria potentially and 50 million genus of fungi potentially involved in the process, lock up the toxins to the carbon molecule. So the carbon molecule is a cube. Diamonds are made out of carbon. The hardest substance in the known universe. But it's a cube and, and the toxic elements are locked on to the carbon molecule and become a longer chain molecule which is inert. So it's kind of ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Then it's, and you can test it and you can find lots of research on that. S small amounts, not large amounts, small amounts of toxin into compost materials, taken through a compost process, you test it afterwards, you can't find that material in a volatile form anymore. The environment's been doing it forever. There's quite a lot of toxic materials out there naturally in the, in the environment. And with environmentally rich processes at the soil surface, they come into balance. We're just, all you're doing with a compost heap is you're designing it and revving it up. That's all.